So me and Ashley are here at Joanne's. This is my first time here, and this place is great. I mean. So this week we have tackled a couple different projects. Today is Christmas Eve and I wanted to show you guys how we are making our couch cushions for the bus. For a while I really considered hiring somebody to do this or entirely letting my mom take over because she knows how to do this kind of stuff and I've never sewn before. I'm not really patient when it comes to these things but i borrowed my cousin's sewing machine and i watched two youtube videos how to use a sewing machine <laughs> and how to sew a box cushion if i was able to teach myself how to sew simple box cushions in one day it's really really simple especially with this one tip that i'll show you that saved my life doing this um but i think it can save you a couple hundred dollars if you want to pick out your own fabric and in a few days have your so your first step is going to be cutting the foam to size. So obviously you're going to want to take the measurements from the couches. And keep in mind, if you do have two couches that form to become a bed, you want those couch cushions to all come together and lie in the center to make a bed rather than a couch. So we have two pieces that are about this entire size for the bottom of the couch. And now I'm cutting them to these smaller sections for the back end. When you're doing this, you pretty much need an electric turkey knife <laughs> to cut the foam. It's the only way that you'll get a good clean cut. So we already have it marked on this one side and then we're gonna cut it to the same thing on the other side. It would probably look like I got hit by a bus rather than making cushions for a bus. Shower in three days. Ready? So the next part is cutting the foam. Oh, like butter. So now that we have our two pieces of foam for the backings of the couches, I'm going to double check their measurements and then start cutting the fabric out for each of them. You love your blades? You like your Mars blades? Very creative. Oh no! So these roller blades are supposed to replicate the feeling of skating on ice. <laughs> You guys remember Joe? Joe's How's it going, back everybody? in town. everybody? Hope y'all are doing well. Happy holidays. <laughs> what?
A true skater, guys. You want to know what a skater looks like? Sean's sweatshirt. Ashley. Ashley shorts. Sean's underwear. Nice. <laughs> D shoot you just gave to me. <laughs> Yeah, right. I Get it, man. Little stupid, This looks cool. Action. We're rolling. Action. Okay, cool. We're picking up a few days later. Step two is going to be cutting out your bottom piece of fabric. I got this from a YouTube video. I'll put the title right here. This has worked perfectly. I just followed the direction. They followed what this guy said to do and it worked. So you're going to line your piece of foam up along the fabric and you want to make sure that it's as straight as possible all the way around. I'm freezing by the way. We're in Florida. It's only 60 degrees, but it's like a wet cold. Yeah. So I don't like it. So how much room are you leaving on each side as clearance? It doesn't really matter because I'm actually going to be cutting within this line. So I'm actually trying to get as close to the edge as possible to like, without like compressing the foam too much. I'm just going to trace the outside. That's just the old ballpoint, yeah, standard ballpoint. Old... I've used them. Yeah, good model. Is that the 9.0? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Some of the edges aren't gonna be totally perfect because- I cut them? Yeah. Um, <laughs> because Sean cut them. Like that it's little like cookie cutout right there. Might as well have been the cookie monster. But it's okay because I know in general about the size and I would overestimate it first. So I'm just gonna make sure I have a line all the way around, I'm good. Boom. I'm gonna put that piece of foam aside. Sean drops this and the dog's watered, so it's wet now. We have light now. We have light. Now, the line that you just drew tracing out the piece of foam, you're gonna take a ruler and measure a quarter of an inch within that rectangle on all four sides. That's your cut line. So I'm just gonna go around and mark a few points a quarter inch within, draw that rectangle out, and then cut that. So one quarter inch within the square. You can Step three. Now we're going to cut out that inner line. So you can see there's like a rough perimeter. That's where I traced. And then I drew a line a quarter of an inch on the inside. So that's where I'm cutting. I might go to the bus tomorrow and put the cushions in there and see what they look like. Whoa. So you're cutting within the bigger box. I don't understand that. You know, how would any, how would a piece of fabric that's smaller than the cushion that's going around? I think it like makes it taut and there's like extra room on the sides of the top piece. And we went with the old cream white, easy to match, you know what I mean? We could throw just about any pillow on this couch and it'll look cool. That's so true. But, but we... this fabric's not really that sticky. It's not like leathery like that. It's more mm -hmm. soft. Because one of the things that like Sean's mom suggested was in the summer, it might be kind of hot to sit on, but we can just throw a blanket or mm -hmm. throw down on top of it so that it's soft. I agree. So I really like it a lot. So now we've cut out our bottom piece. I'm just gonna fold that away for a moment. We don't need that. So now I'm gonna take my foam again, my same piece of foam. Ashley's foam. And this one's a little bit trickier because you wanna make sure that you have room on all sides so that when I flip it onto this side, I still have a little bit of room on this edge. And I'm also gonna have to move it in this way so that when I flip it this way, so once you find that, you're gonna trace it one more time. So that makes sense to me because the other one is like a little bit smaller than the actual face. So this one is basically the cover up, larger piece to the face. We have a tough line there. Is it? If I was to measure the width of my foam, you can see here, three inches. Three inches, that's thick, so it's comfort. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna add onto this rectangle equal measurement to my width minus a quarter inch. So if I have a three inch foam, I'm going to add two and three quarter inches. So it's the three inch foam minus a quarter inch. You're confused. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. I either, but it works and I didn't even question it. I was just like, Let's do this. Doesn't make sense to me though. So a really important step is to 
important step. Now that you've drawn your rectangle around your outer rectangle, the bigger one is your cut line. So you're cutting on the outside this time. You are gonna go back into your inner rectangle now. Continue those lines outside of your bigger rectangle because we're gonna end up cutting that out. This will make more sense. So I finally made it to the sewing part of the project where I've just been cutting certain pieces out and getting really good measurements based on the foam. I used Velcro, so I'll show you the extra step that I use. Let's get started. After you get this larger rectangle cut out, these little squares that you left at the corners, you're gonna cut them out. This is the ultimate tip. You have to use, it's called basting tape or sewing tape. You can find it at Joann's or at Michael's. Once you cut your squares off the corners of your top piece, you're gonna take that basting tape and go around each corner. What you're gonna do is take corner, corner, match it there. The tape makes it easy to readjust in a perfect line and that will be where we take our first pretty new, but this is the seam I ended up with. And what you do is flip it inside out. That's the basing tape, so we can just peel that off. After you finish sewing your corners, this is probably the trickiest part. The two nice sides are facing each other. I would recommend basting the two shorter sides first, and then you pick one side, doesn't matter which of the long sides to do, but you're leaving one long side open. So you can see, I have a pretty rough sewing job. It's definitely not perfect. Some are better than others. It'll work all the same. Now that I have this strip attached to the back slash side of my cushion, and then I have the Velcro sewed to the upper part of this, I now just have to place the other, the fuzzy side, and I'm gonna do that on the outside. finished couch cushions in the bus. I was worried that three inches thick was gonna be too high, but it's absolutely perfect. If you wanna sit back, we have this nice little cushion. And we go to make this a guest bed. Pull this out here. And this piece would come down. Thank you guys for watching this week's video. Make sure that you subscribe so that you can see our new projects on the bus every week. Next week we will hopefully have a little more progress in our kitchen, show you our new sink. Yeah, and don't forget me. Don't forget Ashley's it. dad. Gonna stress, not gonna make a mess